Violin World, written by Tsar Yoshi. Chapter 834 This is the plan. Felicity coolly played with her mane, sitting in the Forest King's regalia and pretending not to notice as how and Neonova competed to be the less obvious in ogling her. However far off the rails the plan had gone, she projected nothing but confidence in her ability to handle the griffins herself, greed and high emotions the only tool she needed for the job. Eventually, her patience paid off. Gerardo crested a hill first, flying low to the ground, and Slipstream was with him, both looking badly fatigued. The four griffins behind them moved with much greater stealth, though all that was lost the instant they beheld her garments. Whoa! Chartreuse gaped. Shut up! Red elbowed her into the ground. You'll blow her cover! I didn't realize our hosts had such exquisite taste in fashion, Blue remarked, landing and trotting close enough to bow. He completely ignored the two stallions, focused entirely on Felicity. A testament to the legends of your enormous wealth, I'm sure. Pray tell, that garment must have a story. Felicity fluttered her eyelids at him and struck a pose. What, this old thing? Something about it struck your fancy? Most certainly, Blue rose from his bow. Though that conversation is for later, I'm afraid. It wouldn't do for a lady of refinement such as yourself to be caught outside by certain undesirables on a night like this. Might we become your escort, milady? Violet blinked expressionlessly. Your ability to fall for bait is inspirational. If I might interrupt, Gerardo panted, setting himself down in the grass. Whatever the agenda is might be on pause given the circumstances. Felicity bumped him in the flank with a wink. Trust me, I know. She sauntered further towards Blue, the magnificent accented coat swaying around her. Seems not everyone has equal appreciation for my taste, though. She shot Violet a haughty, disapproving look. Red growled under his breath. Do we have to do this? What else would we possibly do? She's got the regalia of the chartreuse suddenly found a talent stuffed in her beak, courtesy of Blue. Forget she said anything, he appealed with a winning smile. She's mildly drunk, you see, and her wires are somewhat crossed. Felicity pursed her lips. Hmm. So you do know what this is? Red glanced at Gerardo. Your friends have no idea what's going on, do they? What's going on, Felicity interrupted, is that I'm simply starving, and last I heard, these two left a week ago to bring back the finest in Griffish cuisine. And now, they've finally returned with a mix of refined and dignified gentle griffins, and oafs with no sense of fashion or history. Yet I see no food on any of you. I am fist close to having a fit, and would dearly appreciate it if anyone could bail me out, so to speak. Blue cleared his throat. As rousing of a conversation as this is, I'm inclined to agree with the good madam here. These so-called lodgings of yours are far from excellent. And by that, I mean this hill, since no one would stay in that thing. He waved a dismissive wing at the fallen airship. I would be more than happy to invite you to some higher-class accommodations at my own abode, if you wish. Sure, Red turned his back on the group. Okay, Chartreuse bounced. Felicity blinked as none of the group offered any resistance and smiled. Surely you don't all live together, do you? Violet raised an eyebrow. Would it matter? Felicity bit her lip. Well, you see, darling, I'm ever so slightly more keen on keeping some of your companies than others. That is to say, yes, it does. Exactly one of you has been hospitable so far, after all, and I'm not sure I'd feel comfortable even leaving my wardrobe around undesired attention. Surely you recognize how valuable it is. Blue scoffed, as if I wouldn't have my own manner. Fear not, your assets will be diligently handled. How oh, and Neonova snickered to each other, and Felicity gave them a look. Knock that off, 
She turned back to Blue. Really? Not a lot of competition for a house guest, is there? Depends how much you're willing to pay, Violet replied. You look expensive. Only a fool would host you for free. Felicity raised an eyebrow. And say I was willing to pay, I wouldn't dream of asking it. Blue bowed again. Far better to forge a working relationship rather than extorting capable mares in need, is it not? I'm no highway robber. He glanced up at Gerardo and Slipstream. You'll come too, of course. Your other two friends will need to make far better cases for themselves than silence to tag along. But I smell opportunity in the air at the thought of hosting you. Gerardo and Slipstream turned to each other and shrugged. How much more of a walk is it, Slipstream asked, collapsed on the ground from exhaustion. Blue narrowed his eyes and walked over and lowered his voice. That's a rhetorical question, he hissed, whispering in hopes Felicity couldn't hear. There are equestrians about, and they have a dirty history of stealing things that belong to me. If this friend is the center of the wealth I was advertised, I swear on my honor as a member of the aristocracy that with your cooperation I will only allow your wealth to be parted from you by fair, equitable, and mutually agreed upon methods. Right now, that means prioritizing her safety, so please do everything in your power to come along. We cannot stay here. Pardon me, but I couldn't help overhearing. Felicity trotted nearer. You were a little quiet there, but was that something about thieves in the area? She visibly shuddered. That's exactly what I don't want to hear. Though may I have proof you aren't truly them in disguise? Blue turned to her, his smile returning, and winked. Thievery is an act of utmost dishonor even these credence wouldn't think to commit. He winked at red, violet, and chartreuse. If you need proof of my character, behold. He withdrew from his suited device that looked like a short, compact lance, but when he twisted apart on the hilt, it telescoped violently, shooting the head out on a very short tether with explosive force. Does this look like the weapon of a highway robber, or of someone who seeks to end them? That's an impressive show of arms, Felicity said, unconvinced. Blue stared at her. No reaction? Really? Well, I hope you've led a sheltered enough life not to need to know of these things. I must say, it hurts to see you so confident in my character compared to that of my compatriots earlier, and suspect me of fevery now. Felicity flicked her tail. Hmm, an acceptable point. Exercise your anti-banditry authority and make them be gone. I will travel with you and you alone. Blue waved a wing at the other three griffins. Be gone, all of you. You are no longer of use to me. They faded into the shadows. Wonderful! Felicity happily tilted her chin up. Now, where are we off to? I believe you and I will get along smashingly. End of chapter 834